back at the laboratory. We're taking a few minutes here to do the uh, intake camshaft installation on this wonderful little 2 liter and um, so we want to adjust the valves right now. To adjust the valves you install one camshaft only at a time. <clears throat> I'm setting up the feeler gauge here so we can go through this real quick. Okay. And uh, so I put uh, engine oil on the follower. We've installed the pucks. We've installed the shim spacer underneath the pucks right on top of the valve stem. And so I put some engine oil on top of each puck and then I put a trace of our uh, Hermitex Ultra Slick on there. Kind of swab it together. It doesn't need, if you use too much pre lube, especially with the uh, the old black grease that everybody was using, the suspension grease, you can actually clog up all your oil holes and really screw yourself. So I haven't done that myself when I used to use that, but I've heard of it done. So the long and the short of it is we bolt our intake cam. You can tell this is the intake. A, it's on the intake side, which is shaped totally different than the four, the four uh, holes that come out for the exhaust to hook up to. And uh, so we evenly tighten it down back and forth and it's unsettled when it goes in so I use my handy hammer sometimes and give them a little tap here and a tap there not normally on the cams but especially up here and help settle them but if you work it down it'll come right into position for you and then you've got to turn the um, you got to turn the front of the camshaft so that you can measure each valve and make adjustments at the shim so we're going to measure it make additions or subtractions depending on what the valve clearance is you know this is the intake cam, not only it's on the intake side, but also it's got the variable valve timing uh, apparatus here on the front, the VVT. We'll talk about that later, it's got the little push button in there, I don't know if you can see it or not. So what we do is we take our shim, uh, our uh, feeler gauge, and uh, I'm going to adjust number four over here. So that's the lube depth. And, um, I've got the cam lobe facing away from the from the uh, puck, and I try sixteen thousandths, and that really doesn't want to go. If you look at each here, and you use I use what I call a no go. Uh, it's not my terminology; it's a an industry terminology. Go no go, and so one gauge will go, and the next gauge won't go. That's how you know what's working. The one that goes through, if the next one don't do it, then you're, you know where you're at. So I tried 16. I'm trying 15 now. And you just do a light feel to it. And that's going right through there. It's got a little bit of tension. What you want to make sure you're doing is that you're not pushing the valve open a little bit there when you're pushing that thing. So I take a 14. And the 14 is real slippery. So we're going to call that 15,000. So that's what we write down here. I got my little log over here in a regular notebook, 0.015. I'm just making notes. And in my notes, it says uh, <clears throat> the engine that I'm working on, 2 liter Spider 91. So it's a Motronic. It's the intake valve adjustment. And the columns are for number one through four on the intake uh, camshaft. And then um, the subcategories are the amount that we have. Then the next one is the amount that we need. And there's an operating range. And then the difference is what we need to replace. So now what we're going to do is do a little math on that deal. I'm going to strip this camshaft off because there are a couple that are going to need some changes in the uh, thickness of, the, of the, uh, the pucks that sit on top of the valve stands. So I'll take this one out. And then we'll tighten down the exhaust, which is loose. And after we tighten down the, uh, loosen this and tighten this down, then we can do that uh, measurement. And uh, we'll check back. So we've done our calculations on our uh, intake camshaft here. And here's what we found. Make sure you can see the paperwork here. Okay. It's a very simple worksheet. I actually uh, put this into a document and then the customer gets a book of the blueprinted specifications for his engine. But what you're going to find is that, uh, here we go, 
we need 15 thousandths of intake clearance. On 14, uh, I'm sorry, number one, we have 14 thousandths, number two, 11, number three, 17, uh, and four, we're right on the money. Now, the specification is from 15 to 18, or 15 to, let's see what the alpha specs are for Motronic is right here intake is 15 to 18 exhaust is 17 to 20 okay now uh, for us power hungry gearheads I don't like 15 to 18 I like 15 more because if I minimize the valve clearance without burning the valves up or running into anything which is what the factory specs are for then uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna pick the lower number. I'm not going to be lazy. The lower number gives me three thousandths more more lift uh, on the intake lift than 18 does. So I'm going to get greedy and take 15. That's within the factory spec. So I'm going to whatever that shim measures in the number one slot, I'm going to go plus one. So I want to go get zero zero one. Then when I take it out, I'm going to measure what it is, add one, and, and that's my shim. This one will be plus four. This one's 17. Now, some people, a lot of people, that don't care about doing everything right would go, oh, 17 is between 15 and 18. I'll keep it. Now, we're going to go minus two. Once again, let's scrape. This is free power that you're talking about. Now, this one just happens to be exactly 14 or I'm sorry 15 so that is going to be what we call in Scuderia Silva that specification gets a blue check and that's just my way of knowing because I always use blue check that that's done and I'm not thinking about that one again then when I get these different uh, after I measure the uh, shims and get the appropriate ones when I'm reinstalled intake after I measure the exhaust and take the exhaust cam back out. Remember, we're only working with one camshaft at a time. If you put both camshafts in and bolt them both down, one, a valve will run into another valve because they're just way too uh, tight of clearance. So you do one at a time, adjust one at a time, measure one at a time, take the other one out. We're not going to put them both in until we're ready to actually get the thing ready to put on the engine or on the block. And... Um, that time is soon coming because I think I might have some shims in stock that we can get this done with. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the number one, add one thousandth, number two, add four thousandths, number three, subtract two thousandths. Okay, so here's our intake work. Now I'm going to measure the exhaust like we talked about earlier. Okay, same setup. Section, cam, or having to do with cams, subsection, what I'm doing with them. I'm adjusting the valves. If I was doing the crankshaft, it would say crank. And then the, what are you doing to it? You're measuring the main clearance or whatever you're doing. So it's just a simple chart. It's very easy. And then you've got documentation of what you did. So when you break something, which if you're doing your job, you will do, then you can know to go back and go, well, you know, maybe this was a little tight or this was a little loose or I forgot to tighten something, but you have notes. Side note to the text in the session, when you take the uh, camshaft back off, loose, sometimes you got to beat the cam a little bit. You're not going to hurt it, but you'll have to hit it a little bit, and then you can get those off. Now, uh, I keep track of mine by putting some chalk marks on them, so I know which cap goes in which slot. But don't be afraid to tap that a little bit if you need to get these caps loose and they won't come loose. Sometimes you just can't get them off if you're trying in a regular way. Now, I'm also going to re, uh, when I put them back together, I'm going to re-lube them again with uh, a little bit of the, of the uh, Super Slug and um, Ultra Slug and a little bit of engine oil once again. But now we've got our intake camshaft back out have a tray for that out here and I do not however I have a shop towel so that takes care of that one so um, for instance in number in number three where in 
Okay, I gotta find my mics. Uh, in any case, let's take um, let's just take number one for an example. That's off by uh, one thousand. So, not right like that. Okay. So we know that we just looked at our notes, and we know this puck here <coughs> is uh, a thousandth uh, light. We only had 14 coins, we need 15. So I use my magnet, pull that out. This is the adjusting shim. Don't lose it. It's about three or four bucks a piece, minimum. So there's my adjusting shim, so I'm going to measure this with my micrometer here, my zero to one mic, and which you just put the mic right in there and on the back. If you don't know how to use a mic, look it up. It's easy. And I'm going to measure this one however many thousandths that is, I'm going to add one thousandth to it and that's what I'm going to uh, uh, require to get the right adjustment. Now at the same time I'm going to take this shim and on that same worksheet I'm going to set the shim on the worksheet and I'm going to write down right next to the shim what measurement this thing is because it could be that we could swap a couple of them back and forth. So uh, put this on your worksheet right underneath where you did all your intake stuff. We'll make the exhaust valves a different, a completely separate sheet. And so uh, I'm going to get my mic and we're going to measure them and write them down. Okay, there will be a test. This is a micrometer. You measure the micrometer, let's do a mini micrometer session. You measure the micrometer, each little number here is uh, a hundredth of an inch. So each mini, mini, I'm sorry, mini uh, integer in there, those little baby spaces, that's all going to be 25 thousandths of an inch because 25 thousandths times 4 equals a hundred thousandths. So when you read it, you use this number here and then you add 25 for each little hash mark here and then you look on here and add the distance between 0 and this instance is 3 and add a 3 at the end so if you're reading this mic that would be um, 328 thousandths okay so practice that it's called adding okay now the way the proper use of a micrometer if you're a machinist is like this okay we don't want to be seeing a bunch of sloppy action all over the mic. You hold it with your pinky, and here's one of our shims. And we always inspect our shims. We see it's nice and shiny, and uh, no wear or anything like that. It shouldn't have any wear. It just goes up and down. Rides under the cap. The inside looks great. The surface looks great. So we know that this one, this is number three, and I'm keeping my pucks in order here. And number three, we said that it needed to be minus two thousandths. So take your mic and twist this down there and we're going to measure this little baby. We go just down easy, easy, just right to it, just where it stops, just like that. Okay? Yep, good. Okay? Then we measure it and it says, we're on zero, we're not on a hundred thousandths yet. It says that this is 50 plus 13, two hashes. Yes. Sorry, I got to take my glasses off to see this little stuff like that. Two uh, hash marks plus 13. So 50, 63 is what we have here. We want. Two thousandths less. We want a 61. And unfortunately, out of the three we've popped out of here so far, I don't have a 61. But that's what we need, and that's how you do that. So now that I've got the intake cam off, I have to get the new uh, shims. I because we cut the valves and this, or I'm sorry, not the valves. The valves were new because we cut the seats. Everything's going to be different. So normally you'll run into a couple that you can hot swap, but not all of them, almost ever. So I'm going to make that recording. This was 63 in my book over here. And just go 0.63, and 
And then I'm going to go ahead and do, while I'm working on this still, or while I'm still working on this would be the correct English. I keep them like that. I don't know if you can see it. I hope you can see it. If you can't see it, it's too bad. I keep them like that on the book. Then I'm going to flip the page, set this, well, I'll do something. And, um, but I'm going to measure the other ones. I'll probably actually get a fresh page and I'll put the other ones maybe right underneath here. So I have them lined up, the ones that are incorrect. And we'll see if that fits any of my needs over here. I need an 047, I need a 60 thousandths, and um, I have an 046, an 056, and an 063. So I'm going to measure the rest of them and see if anything matches up, and if I can get something squared away like that, I'll do that. So there's the oil on there. Now I'm going to put, I, I don't put uh, the ultra slick, I don't put that in. Uh, the cam bearings right now. You just put a little bit on where the lobe's going to be. And once again, I've already gone through here. I like mixing the two up. So get your 2050 and put some in the cam bearings and some on the, on the uh, followers. Okay, and that's it. Get them poked around. Get everything juiced up. You don't want any dry spots is the main point. Don't overdo it. You don't need a million pounds of grease and stuff to foul your work surfaces, but we want it to look like it's going to be slippery when we set it up. And so, uh, here's the exhaust camshaft. And I'm just going to gently Pay attention to this front uh, collar system here. Can you see the front collar? Yes, you can. Okay. So this front collar is what I'm trying to line up. All right. Now we're going to put our our uh, caps on. <clears throat> Once again, a little juice. And uh, these caps have not been cleaned properly yet. And so we're going to send them back to the squib department. I'm going to put a little juice on each one of these two. This is not the final assembly, this is just to get the valve adjustment done. And a little sauce there. Okay. Okay, you see the tab? On this side, the, the tabs go in, so I had that one on backwards, so I put that on correctly. A little sauce here. And uh, when you're doing this, you want to pay attention to keep it over the cam boxes. Don't get the sauce all over the block that you just meticulously cleaned and now has loose oil on it because then you're going to get off camera and spend about five minutes trying to get all of the oil I just stripped on there from the cam caps. It doesn't matter, it's not perfect, but keep it clean. Okay, now I'm going to put the uh, Remember that these have wave washers on them. Remember that the exhaust also does not have, I think this engine has 9 millimeters of intake left. I don't know what this has, but it's not 9 millimeters. Because all the cam caps fit. Not the cam caps, I'm sorry, the uh, cam caps are, are, when I say fit, I mean that they're low enough and I can actually get the nuts on. Where the intake system, there's so much uh, lift in the cam, that's why it's a Ricky Racer motor, it's really sweet. But you can't put all these on very easily, you have to gently push them down before you can even get uh, some of these caps started. These nuts on the cap started, so um, you can also tell this is a high lift. This has got that variable, 
valve timing, and you can also tell it's a high lift cam because Alpha in, uh, I don't know when they started this one, I don't know, I, I think it started with the Motronic motors, I think it was just 89, maybe 89 through, I don't know, I'm a little confused on that one, but what I'm pointing out is that at some point when they ramped up the cam, I think it might have been 89, you can see how they cut away the, the follower pockets. Now if you look on this side on the exhaust, there's no need to cut away the follower pockets because the lobe's not going to run into it. But on the intake, the reason that they relieve these is for exactly that reason. Because you put that big camshaft in here and when that lobe swings around, it's going to hit here and blow the block apart, the head apart, or hit here and do the same, or destroy itself. So anyway, much bigger cam, you got to open this stuff up. We're back at uh, Scuderia Silva here. We're going to offer up the cylinder head on the 1991 Motronic Alfa Romeo. And I'd like to put my fat ass in the picture for a second and get you down here on our program. We've got uh, our head bolts lined up here, factory head bolts. We've got some double Viton seals, which we're going to install on the cylinder head. And then we've got our shims and washers in order to install the cylinder head and uh, our lifting mechanism for the engine. This is the engine hook. So we've had these safely stored and now we're ready to get down to some business here. So I'll clip that little thing off and uh, let's get down to some action. I've got my assistant here, Matthew Porter, the professional detail master. And so together we're going to, with his assistance, We'll get this cylinder head installed real quick. First thing I'm going to do is take these uh, double-sided uh, Viton seals. The factory has one seal and they're not Viton. And so they cost some more uh, money, but I buy them from Paul School uh, Racing in Georgia. And it's the right action for your high rod alpha here. So let's go A-Team. I've installed some uh, just regular black RTV and I'm going to put these seals right on here in these little locations that I pre-greased. There we go. And so we'll put these all on here gently. They're going to stick in place. We've meticulously cleaned the block. Uh, we have all the orifices uh, have just been <clears throat> opened up to make sure there's no gunk in any of it. And now, if I can have my diligent assistant <clears throat> help me, we're going to hold the timing chain out of the way. Now, Matthew, go ahead and grab that and just hold this up by the... Now, what I want to show you is that you don't have to have... There's a couple notes I want to make real quick. So we're going to go freestyle here. One, you don't have to have all the fancy wire and stuff. What I do is, is just put a uh, wire tie down low so that it holds it on the, on the uh, idler chain. And then I also put, if you move your hand, Matthew, real quick there, I also put two uh, zip ties in the top. And so I'm going to cut that zip tie down there uh, free, and then we'll... Uh, when we put the link together, we'll uh, chop those off, but in, in uh, the meantime, Matthew has something to hold on to. So we're ready to go. Let's uh, go back to the stationary picture again. So let's put the uh, cylinder head gasket on. Uh, there's no reason to put any copper coat or anything on, on like that, so we'll go ahead and set this over the timing chain pieces and get the head lined up, and there we go. And now, I'm going to cut loose the lower part of the chain because Matthew's going to hold it up, and then I'm going to offer the cylinder head over this, and Matthew's going to work the uh, through the upper timing chest and keep this chain out of my way and he's going to hold on to it so we don't drop it. So now we're going to, we put some uh, Ultra Black, my favorite product, just a very thin light coating 
on the timing chest, especially where the timing chest meets the engine and around the seals. Now we're going to offer up the head gasket. <coughs> And there we go, nice, make sure everything's fit, make sure all the holes are lined up, perfect. And now we're going to take the cylinder head. Alright, so we've cleaned up the uh, cylinder head real nice. And we've got everything lubricated, we've got the intake system installed here. That's some of the uh, support system for the, for the uh, intake system there. And now we're going to bolt the cylinder head to the engine chain through the hole there, through the middle, nope, right there, okay, and as Matthew holds the chain, I'm going to go ahead and line up the cylinder head. So we can hold that to that side. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and uh, thank you, Matthew. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, do the torque sequence on it. We'll do a little cleanup work real quick. Let's get it done. We're going to put uh, we got the head installed now, and what we're going to do next is use some 508 uh, Lubro Molly anti-seize compound. We've got our factory washers. I'm going to put just a slight, barely a slight little amount on there just for lubrication so that we can get our accurate torque setting. We've got everything immaculately clean. Had Matthew Porter's detail service out here all day today meticulously cleaning up every single little part of our project here. Now I'm going to take that and just spread it around a little bit. There's none on there, but you just got enough. If you uh, use it like this, you won't have any... Sometimes the coolant will come up through the, the uh, head studs, and that's why we use the factory cap nuts, and that's why we put this lubrication on there to make sure we get an accurate torque. So go ahead and slam the uh, washers on here. And our first torque, we're going to torque this in three steps. The alphas are really interesting the way they torque the cylinder heads. You have a three torque system to torque it down, and then after a thousand miles, uh, you come back and uh, loosen each head nut and then do it again. Only the Italians would even think of something like that. So uh, I had one extra stud uh, in my hand, and uh, so I put them on the front four and the back four. In this middle section, that's the engine lifting uh, piece. So we're going to put that right here. And now we'll put our head nuts on, and then we'll torque them down. Live action. Got our nuts tightened down there. We're going to run these down to uh, 45 foot-pounds. And so I just go ahead and snug them all up here in our normal random pattern first. And then we'll go to 45, and then we're going to go to something else, and we're going to end up at 65. We've got the new snap-on uh, knurled uh, extensions, which are sweet. You're going to hold on to them when you're all greasy and stuff. And uh, we're going to be making some horsepower pretty quick here. I can feel it coming. Okay, now. There's 45, right there. And now I'll go around the pattern and we're going to snug it up. Let's see, what's our next? Our next move is going to be to uh, so 45 pounds is our first head torque, and then we're going to go to 55 foot pounds, and then we'll do a final uh, torque of 65. Now, if you don't put uh, some extra RTV on here, well, it's not RTV, ultra black. If you don't put it on here, you're going to leak out of the front uh, cover there. So write that down. When you have a leak, you didn't follow my instructions, and that's where you're at. Keeping in mind that Italian and British cars 
if they're not leaking oil they probably don't have any oil in it at the same time we want to get a nice little cover on both of those things and then we're going to offer these up in through the bottom stair and Matthew is going to go ahead and run that bolt up for me go ahead take that one I'm going to run this one up and then he's going to have to hand jive it all the way into place and we're going to torque that to 13 foot pounds Okay, we're, uh, I just want to go over something really quick. Um, there's an expensive Alfa Romeo tool that you can buy in order to turn the uh, intake camshaft. It's got the VVT on it, the variable valve timing. And that uh, in itself is a different class that I'm not teaching right now. But uh, my point is that if you go to Home Depot and you buy a pipe wrench for plumbing, that opening happens to exactly fit the intake camshaft. So as you want to turn the camshaft back and forth, this is a perfectly good $18 tool instead of the $186 Alpha tool, which by the way you can't buy, you'd have to make it. So we're going to set the uh, exhaust camshaft in here now and uh, we've got the timing chain set where we want it. We've got the intake camshaft set up so if you look at the intake camshaft there's a mark on the cam and there's a mark on the the uh, camshaft cap housing there's a little cap right there so I'm going to align those exactly perfect and then we're going to install the exhaust cam. Okay, so now I'm showing you the camshaft lineup mark here. And you can see it's dead on. This is the mark on the cam cap, and that is the mark on the camshaft itself. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I should do that in view. There's the mark, there's the cam mark. Now we're going to put in. There we go. Now we're going to put in the uh, exhaust cam. Now what we're going to do is offer up the cam shaft. Make sure we get the right shot here. Yep. Okay, so a little more ultra slick for my friends at Permatex. And uh, don't worry too much about having too much Permatex on here. I'm going to coat the cam lobes again before I put the cam cover on. And uh, got the exhaust cam. Now keep in mind the exhaust cam is only a 9mm lift. And in the old cars, uh, better put the chain on there. Uh, in the old cars, um, they both had 9mm lift, and then the later cars went to 11mm on the Motronic cars on the intake side only. So you've got not only a variable advance on the cam with the VVT system they have on here, uh, but you also have a much higher uh, lift and, and uh, higher horsepower. So I'm going to take the uh, timing chain here, wrap it around this side, and get it over to that side, and then we'll uh, get this thing bolted down. The idea here with my little chain system is that I can clip this one off and I can still keep the rest of the intake chain tied over there. I've already clipped off the one on the inside. Now we're going to push this chain through here and pick up the exhaust side and then we're going to put the camshaft in sweet as she can be so this camshaft has a mark on it and it's right here make sure I got it in the shot yep okay so the cam marks right here 
And so once again, now we've got the cam cap. And the cam cap, just like the other side, you got the, the little mark there. So we're going to align that mark with the cam cap mark, and then we're going to install the chain. Let's take our time, timing chain here, and uh, we'll put these two together now. Got the cams lined up. Take our master link. Push my hands right away again. Take our master link, our little end here, and we're going to put those two together. And then we're going to put the uh, center spacer in. This one, you can do one at a time. Now, maybe not. Do not drop the master link into the engine right now. That would be exactly the wrong move. We almost got it made. We're almost done. I'm going to keep my magnet right there just in case. I scared myself. So take the uh, link, put it in one side. Put it on the other side. It's just a, it's a bicycle chain basically. Only on steroids. Alright. There you got part of it. Now we're going to take the spacer, put the spacer in there. Now grab the other chain, secondary chain, on both of them. Almost got it. Oh, come on now. There we go. Okay. And now we're going to put on the uh, put the clip on right there. And then I'm going to loosen this. I've got my notches marked up here. This is the timing chain tensioner. I'm going to release that, taking this tension out of here. Rotate the engine over one time. Make sure everything's lined up. Check my cam marks again. Make sure that I don't run into anything. And then we're going to put the uh, cam cover on. So you. Uh, Loosen the tension bolt here. We've already installed the chain. Go ahead and rotate it around a little bit, and then we tighten up this tensioner. And that is going to maintain the tension on the bolt there, and that's set up by the spring, which is in the tensioner. So we're going to go ahead and tighten that down. Perfect. Okay. Now. Uh, I've already done it, but we're going to rotate it around. You can see the cam, cams in the chain turn. I'm going to kick that back. I think you can see that better. So you just run, run it around, nice and gentle. Make sure that you're uh, running around. Make sure it doesn't run into anything. You can hear it gasping and cooking in there and compression and stuff. Even though it's uh, just barely moving, you can hear it through the exhaust ports. So we're going to go ahead and run that around, we've done that. Um, probably go ahead and set this back to TDC on number one. Yeah, you can hear it gasping. Nice. This is going to be a little sweet part here. And uh, takes a lot of time, but uh, you know, that's where we're at. Gasket over here, which I can't reach. Go ahead and wipe this down. Nice flat surface. Now we've got our little half moon pieces in the back. I don't put any uh, gunk on them or anything. I'm hoping I can. I might even in the shot. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. So, anyway, those go in the back. A couple points of order here. 
I'm going to put a little uh, of my uh, black uh, silicone on there. Uh, a couple points of order on the engine uh, that are important to remember. One, use Viton seals because they're heat resistant and phenomenally better than regular seals. Two, it won't leak as much. Three, uh, the Viton seals that are very important are the six on the cylinder head, the one in the timing chest here in the front, and the one on the oil pump uh, into the bottom of the block. Uh, I think those are the most critical. We want to use the double, remember to get the Viton seals from Paul Spruill Racing. They're a double seal Viton for the cylinder heads, and you shouldn't have any leakage or any problem, you know. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and just set the gasket on there. We'll get us some ultra black going. Which I should have had set up and didn't. Put some ultra black. I love these little tubes because you can kind of give you a little more flexibility. Yeah, they're more money. Who cares? All right, so I'm gonna put a little dab, a little dewy on the on each side. I know you can't see it, but now you can see it. Just put some on each corner there. That's all you need. Shoot some in the hole here. Just enough to keep the threads sealed up and uh, gas it, put a gas gap there. And here is our little pretty little alpha engine. Make sure you line up the uh, gasket on the back here, right on top of the cam seals. Now another thing that uh, Ferrari Jim wanted me to mention, and there's no way to do this politely, but um, he's an expert on these engines. One more point of order that you really want to make sure that you get right. Is to take a bolt and put a bolt backwards in here and pro probably put a nut on it and use the bolt and say if you don't have a whatever size this is which I don't have uh, put a bolt in here backwards put a nut on it and make sure that these are cranked down because if they're in the car you got the firewall right here you ain't gonna get to those so make sure those are not leaking or make sure they're not loose anyway um, I think other than that, we're going to throw the rear main seal in, take it off the engine stand, throw in the rear main seal down here, which we've got handy. And I'm going to change the bushing, once again, Paul Spruill Racing in Georgia. They have the tapered uh, input shaft bushing for the, goes in the back of the crankshaft so that when you offer up the transmission, it's got a nice little uh, cut on it so that it slides right in the hole. And then we're going to use our flywheel bolts and red Loctite on those babies and this lock plate. And we're done. Over and out. Oh, we also got to put the power steering pump on the front of the engine. Uh, and that'll come here shortly. Put our VVT in. And then we're going to cap it off here. And I'll check back in just a second. We'll call it good. Set that little bag baby on there thusly. And then except for the ancillaries, we'll be calling this Alfa Romeo complete. And uh, let's go make some horsepower. We'll get it in the car here and then we'll uh, put it on the chassis dyno and see what we make. Alright, horsepower garage. Scuderia Silva.